All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of our virtual keeper chats. We're here every day at 11 o'clock from the Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford, Massachusetts. I'm happy to see a lot of our favorite faces and hopefully some new faces today. For those of you who have been to our zoo before, you probably know what building we're in today. Um, we have a special treat for you. We're going to be introduced to a really cool animal in our Rainforest Rivers and Reefs building. Um, hello, welcome back. Nice to see all of you here today. I hope you're having a wonderful time out there, enjoying some fresh air outside. All right, so I am going to introduce you to uh, the director of the zoo, Keith Lovett. He's going to be introducing us to um, one of our primate species here in the Buttonwood Park Zoo's Rainforest Rivers and Reefs building. So I'm going to turn it over to Keith. Hello everyone, good morning. Um, I'm very excited to bring you to what is my favorite building in the zoo, one of my favorite places in the zoo, um, and that is our Peru habitat in our Rainforest Rivers and Reefs exhibit. And this is an exhibit we opened in 2017, July 2017, um, that many people have come through and it's a great exhibit, not only for the um, amazing amount of animals in here, it's just that we have mixed species exhibits here at the zoo and we have everything from primates, living with birds, living with lizards, we have fish down below, ducks down below, so these are some of our most complex habitats and these are some of our uh, most enjoyable habitats here at the zoo as well. Today we're going to be introducing you to an animal that um, a lot of people uh, are very fond of and I think they're fond of it because of their unique facial hair and that is our emperor tamarind monkeys. We have a family group of emperor tamarinds. Um, what most people recognize right off the fact is they got these great mustaches on their face. Um, these are called bearded emperor tamarinds because not only do they have the mustache, they have some long stringy hairs that come down across their chin to make them bearded as well. So these are some very unique species. This is a family group of emperor tamarinds. We have a mother, a father, and two young animals. Carrie, how old are the juveniles right now? Five months old. So the twins that we have here are five months old. Emperor tamarinds, when they give birth, they usually give birth to twins. And this was what happened with this pair. This is their first birth, and they have the twins here who are just miniature versions of their parents. Um, you can see them eating away right now on some of the treats that Carrie, our rainforest keeper, has given them. Um, and they're all doing great in this family group here at the zoo. All right, so just like other days, if you have some questions that you'd like to ask about emperor tamarinds, feel free to put them in the comments. Keith, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about where emperor tamarinds live in the wild? So tamarinds um, are what are called cattle trickets. No, I'm gonna, not gonna get too uh, technical here, but marmosets and tamarinds are a family of monkeys that live mostly through South America, during, through tropical forests in South America. This species, emperor tamarind, their largest range is, range is in Peru, but they will also go down into Brazil, Brazil and Bolivia as well. But this is a species that's mostly found in rainforest of Peru. Um, Jacob, age six, is wondering, since they live in kind of a warm, wet place, what their fur does for them. So a lot of people think fur, that that only keeps an animal warm. Fur also helps thermoregulate. What that basically means is that it keeps them cool as well. So their fur is less about keeping them warm, it's just as much about keeping them cool. And that's how it's similar to a dog with their fur in the different patterns. So it protects them from the temperature, but also protects them from all those amazing insects that live down in the rainforest through the Amazon. Ooh, we've got a lot of great questions coming in. Emily would like to know what they eat and what are they eating right now? So these guys have a variety of diet. In the wild, it varies depending on the season, basically what's growing in the forest. They eat a lot of different types of fruits. Um, they eat some plant matter. But as far as all the tamarinds, these guys eat more protein than any other um, tamarind species. And what I mean by protein, they eat a lot of stuff like insects, eggs, even small birds if they can catch them. So these guys eat a lot of animal matter and insect matter compared to most tamarind species. Right now they're eating grapes and mealworms here at the zoo that Carrie has put out as a nice treat today. Um, Kaiden age nine would like to know if they're endangered. So this particular species of primate is not endangered. Their numbers are decreasing in the wild, and that's unfortunately because of the pet trade um, down through South America. But their numbers are still okay. But what we do here at the zoo is we use this very pretty species to 
talk about so many of the other endangered species of tamarins that are found in the forest. So right now they're doing okay, but their numbers are declining. All right, Sydney, age 11, wants to know why their tails are so long. So anytime you see an animal with a long tail, that usually is because of balance. With these guys, they you climb all the way through the trees as you see them doing right now. This helps them balance as they're jumping from tree to tree or from branch to branch. It's no different than say a snow leopard with the long tree uh, tail that's going up through rocky mountains. Tails are usually meant for balance and that's what the case is with these guys as well. Great. Um, Caitlin would like to know how long they live. So these guys in a captive situation at a zoo, they can live until the late teens, early 20s. Typically they're not gonna live as long in the wild, um, and that's because at a zoo you're given you know, more specific care if an animal gets sick. Uh, wonderful veterinarians at the zoo can take care of them. But in a zoo situation, these guys can live into their late teens to early 20s. Great, Anna, age five, has a great question. Since we've been learning a lot about enrichment through these virtual keeper chats, we see them with these items here. That what do they like to play with? What kind of enrichment would they like? So when you're dealing with primates, um, in this case monkeys, a large portion of their day is spent foraging for food. And what that means is they're searching around their habitats looking for food. Here at the zoo, we just don't want to give them a dish of food. We actually want them to show natural behaviors by searching through things. In this case, with these boxes, they have to dig in. There's different types of substrates and materials in there they have to dig through. So basically, they need to manipulate and forage to get their diet very similar to what you would see in the wild. Great. Um, Bray is wondering if they have a favorite snack. So these guys being tamarins, they all love their fruit. I will say that we are a little bit spo spoiled as humans because the fruits that we love and that are available to us are a little bit different than what you find in the wild. We have manufactured them to be very sweet, but I would say their favorite foods are grapes and different type of insect materials as well. Awesome. Elizabella is wondering if their mustache serves any purpose or is it just for show? That is an excellent, excellent question and it is for show, but it's a show for a purposeful way. Basically similar to a peacock who spreads its tail feathers, the mustache is used to attract a mate, to attract a boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, Basically, the best way to describe it is that animal or that emperor tamarind with the best mustache is more likely to attract um, more attention from the opposite sex. So they use this as a means to attract other members of their um, species. Excellent. Savannah, age six, what a great question. It's hard to tell how big they are in this video, but how much do they weigh? How big are they? These guys are only gonna be about a pound and a half when they're full grown. Um, their body is a little bit thicker, pretty close to what you would see, maybe a little bit smaller than a squirrel. So if you look at them, think of more on squirrel size, gray squirrels that we see around here, and that gives you a good idea what size these guys are. Great. Um, some people are joining us maybe after we've introduced these guys. How old are the Emperor Tamarins we're meeting today? Carrie, how old are the parents? So the father and their names Pepper and Jack. Jack. Sorry, I should have known that. Jack and Pepper. So the mother again is how old? Five, uh, four. Mom's four. Mom's four and dad is five. five. So these are still young. This is the first time they gave birth. They are four and five years old and the <laughs> juveniles, the young guys who one was looking at right now, they are five months old. And as I said before, they can live into the late teens into the twenties. Sorry, I'm just going through. Um, Kaiden, age nine, are they carnivores? They are not carnivores, um, but they do have carnivorous ways. They are not truly considered a carnivore, but they do eat a lot of meat um, and insects. So more insects than meat, but they will go after eggs. They will go after small lizards, uh, maybe a bird, um, but they do eat a lot more what you would call carnivorous diet than most monkeys and most tamarins. Um, but they still eat a lot of fruits and a lot of plants. You guys, uh, you're just so amazing with these questions that have been coming through with these virtual keeper chats. Maddie, age six, wants to know why their tails are orange. While their tails are orange. So a lot of people don't 
get the colorations of animals, and that can be from a bird to, in this case, a monkey, to a lot of different species, it has to do with camouflage. So although you wouldn't imagine this would blend real well, if you look at them against some of the trees here in our rainforest exhibit, you can see they blend in real well. So when, typically when an animal has a certain color, that has to do with its camouflaging in the wild. Although these guys will hunt some small animals, there are a lot of animals that will try to hunt them. Um, some small cat species, some other carnivore species, and a lot of birds of prey. So they use the colors that they have in the fur to blend into their environment. Great, Emma is wondering if they're nocturnal. No, these guys are diurnal, which means they're active during the day. They're going to be active all day long. They spend all day basically foraging for their diet. They are very high metabolism species, which basically means they need to eat a lot of food all day long. So they are active during the day. At night, they nest down in typically tree cavities. Here at the zoo, we do give them natural tree cavities. We also give them nest boxes. So as soon as it starts, sun starts setting, these guys, they go into their tree cavity, which again is a way to protect themselves in the wild from predators because they are better suited at night and they go to sleep in a tree cavity to protect themselves when the carnivores come out at night. We've got some really good questions just about their behavior and relationships. Do they fight with each other? Do they live in family groups? How long would these babies be with their parents? So the, these guys, they do live in extended family groups, and the way the family groups work is you have a mother and father, and then you have multiple children or offspring. Um, this case it's just two, but there'll be many more. We have a family group of Geldies monkeys, which is also a Cameron species, um, in another area of rainforest, and they have a family group of eight right now. So they will stay with the family group probably for about five or six years. At that point, they would be put into, they would pair up with another animal and likely go to another zoo. But we expect to have a large Cameron group here. As far as whether they get along, as a family group, they are very cohesive, which means they are very close knit. Um, but like any family group, they do have a few spats now and then. A lot of times it is the juveniles, the five months old, who like to be a little bit pest to the parents or pest to their siblings. So yes, they are very bonded together and yes, they fight like every family. I'm sure our visitors at home are dealing with that with their quarantine Absolutely. situation. Um, okay, great question. Harrison, age nine, wants to know, do they hang or swing from their tails? So this particular species of monkey do not have what is called a prehensile tail. A prehensile tail is a tail that they could actually hang from. This tail is used for balance, not from hanging. So no, they cannot hang from their tail. There are some species of monkeys through South America and Central America, like capuchins and spider monkeys and hollow monkeys that can actually hang from their tail. But these guys know they use their tail from balance and they cannot hang from it. All right, Laura's wondering if they interact with the other monkeys in the building. So here at the Buttonwood Park Zoo, we do a lot of mixed species exhibits. Um, some of our monkeys exhibits do live together. In this case, or in, right now, we have our TT monkeys and our pygmy marmosets together. It depends on the family group. This species, Emperor Tamarins, they can get along sometimes with other monkey species, but typically when they start having a family group like they have now, they have less tolerance for that. So right now, we only keep the Emperor Tamarins with birds and lizards and some other animals, sloth included, but we do not keep them with other monkeys. Okay, I appreciate the adult Matt telling us his age is 42 wants to know um, how big their family groups get in the wild. So typically in the family group in the wild these guys are going to have anywhere from 8 to 10 so that, that basically gives you 6 or 8 offspring. You're basically you're given twins birth assuming that they all survive in the, in the wild. Usually by about the third litter that's born, third twins are born, they start to go off on their own to develop their own family group. So it's usually two to three births. Now with tamarins, not to get too scientific here, but with tamarins, it is very important that the younger or the offspring watch their parents raise other offspring. This is how they learn their parenting skills. They actually help out. These guys are a little young, but when the parents give birth again in a few months, they will actually help the parents raise the offspring. And this is where they learn the parented skills, and this is incredibly per important. This is a learned behavior um, as much as it is an innate behavior or a evolutionary behavior. Um, great. Kelsey, age 10, is wondering, I know you talked to when they sleep, but how long do they sleep? 
So they are good sleepers. They get a good eight hours of sleep at night. Usually it depends on the season. They're not always sleeping in their nest box, but typically they're going to stay in their tree cabin, your nest box, at any time that it gets dark. Um, it's funny, we will do tours at the zoo on night times and honestly, they may come out and sn snag a treat from a keeper, but if it's dark outside because this exhibit is all glass roof skylights, they go right back to bed. So anytime it's dark, they're in the nest box, but they'll sleep eight to 10 hours a day easily. Great, Juliet age seven is wondering if they can swim. They are not, they can swim. The question is, can they swim? Anytime you live around the Amazon or large water bodies, it is beneficial as a species to know how to swim. With that being said, they do, are they not designed to swim? So if they were to jump in the water here, could they swim? Absolutely, they will swim right out. But they do not spend a lot of time in the water. Honestly, they're more vulnerable in the water. Down in the Amazon, there's a lot of predators that live in the water, so they live in the trees and they don't go in the water, but if they were to go in the water, they are able to swim. Um, Charles, age six, is wondering how many babies they have at one time. Typically, they're gonna have two. With that being said, sometimes on the first birth, they may only have one. And on a rare occasion, some tamarins can have up to four, but typically it is twins born with tamarins. Great, and can you um, just remind everyone the species we're meeting and where they're from in the wild for so, those of us just joining us? So these are bearded emperor tamarins. This is a species that's found in tropical forests through Amazonia, down through Peru, into Bolivia and Brazil. Um, but this is a tropical species from South America and they're called bearded emperor tamarind. And that's because of their beautiful beards and mustaches they have on their face. Great. Um, and we're wondering if they like carrots. Carrie, do they like carrots? So if you can't hear her, they do like carrots. They also like sweet potatoes. They will eat a variety of veggies. I'm just gonna show you a species that's thinking they might like to be on a keeper chat soon. You wanna tell us who that is? That's a guara cuckoo. That is a bird from Southern South America called the guara cuckoo. Uh, they live in large flocks. Um, and there's two right there here in our rainforest exhibits. How many do we have at the zoo now? 10, 12, something like that? Ten, we have 10 cuckoos here at the zoo. So this is a species that's very well mixed with the primates and they're called Guerra cuckoos and they're a South American bird. Great, we had a question going back to the emperor tamarins about if they eat fish. They typically will not eat fish. Um, that's not their diet in the wild. Um, basically they don't spend a lot of time going down to a water's edge because they are very vulnerable. With that being said, if Carrie was in here to feed some of the turtles that we have in here, if she was to give them a fish, would the Emperor Tamarind uh, snag it and try to eat it? Probably, but truthfully in the wild, they do not eat fish, and a part of their diet here at the zoo, we do not give them fish. And I, I, if you're just joining us, I do want to say the person that you're listening to who's answering all these questions is Keith Lovett, the director of the zoo, um, who has a wealth of knowledge about um, lots of New World primates, so if you have any questions for him, now's the time you have him, his full attention. Um, we could probably take a couple more questions. It looks like our animals are almost out of food. <laughs> and if you are just joining us, one of the ones you're seeing right now is one of the babies. They're five months old. Uh, twins. Ah, uh, good question. Uh, they do realize it's not legal, but if it was legal, would they make a good pet? So some of the work we do here at the Bunwood Park Zoo is we talk about the exotic pet trade. I know there's a lot of people out there watching Tiger Kings right now. Um, these guys do not make a good pet. And the reason they don't make a good pet is because they are a social animal. These are species that are designed to live in an extended family group. They're, kind of ex they're designed to live with the type of animals they have. People think they're cute and periodically will get them as pets and they'll put them in diapers. And it's really, it's not natural for these animals. And honestly, when you do that, sometimes we'll get confiscations and other animals that have come in. And you honestly see behaviorally, these guys are not doing well. And the reason is, is a lot of the behaviors they have are learned from their family members. And when you take them away from those family members and you have them as a pet, you're completely changing the behavior of the animal. And this usually results in some very challenging behaviors with the animal. So absolutely not, they do not make good pets. All right. 
So I think we are about to wrap up. You guys had so many great questions. Keith, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap it up? No, just that we love our Rainforest Rivers and Reefs exhibit here at the zoo. Obviously, this is a tough time for everyone in the community, and it's a tough time for us here at the zoo. But we just want to let everybody know we are doing an excellent job making sure we're taking care of our animals. One of the questions I'm surprised I didn't get asked is why has Carrie, why does Carrie have a mask on right now? And we do that for a couple reasons. Um, it isn't just because of COVID-19, although that is one of the reasons. We do that during flu season. Because primates are very related, closely related to humans, there is a concern that we could pass something on to our primates. It could work the other way, but in this case, the mask is on Carrie's face to protect the primates from any type of flu, any type of cold, and of course, of COVID-19 as well. So those are some of the precautions we take here at the zoo um, to make sure our animals are very healthy. Well, thank you, Keith, so much. Thank you, Carrie and the Emperor Tamarins for um teaching us about them today. I hope you enjoyed your virtual keeper chat. We are here every day at 11. Um, we'll have a new surprise for you tomorrow, another animal for you to meet. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day. If you're joining us late and you missed the beginning, definitely tune in. We will post the entire video um, on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. So thank you for joining us and we will see you soon.